So using velocity-based training in the gym can be a little daunting at first. It can also kind of be a bit confusing as to what to do with the data. So you get all this information, you're looking at it and you go, well, cool, that's a set, that's some velocity, but what does it actually mean? I think the best way to do that is to put it within context, particularly your own historical context. So comparing your velocity, power, range of motion today with your own recent history. Now that's easier said than done because not all apps show that in their interface nice and easily. So what I've done is I've created a velocity logbook so that you can train and track your numbers within that, estimate your 1RM, see some profiling scores and see some context compared to your recent average, see your personal bests on this simple to use Google Sheet. It's free to download on the vbtcoach.com website. And it even has a little hack and a little shortcut that if you train with metric VBT, you can have your numbers automatically transposed and, tra and uh, exported into the sheet without even leaving the metric app. Let's dive in, let's get a copy and let's see what's going on with this Velocity Logbook version 2.0. So the first thing you'll see when you open your copy is a little bit of a yellow alert saying there's some app scripts running on the file. Now you don't have to stress too much about these. That will set us up and allow us to then copy the data from metric on your phone into the sheet. And we'll set that up in a later video. I'll show you how to do that at another time. But for now, you just want to make a copy, but I've actually already made a copy before. So we'll use this one. I've named it and I've called it Jacob's Velocity Logbook. Uh, and you'll see on the first page in the instructions, a little bit of a welcome, a little bit of uh, information there. And you'll see three links. Number one is to the tutorial blog, which contains this video as well. Uh, installing the shortcut, which is a video on a blog you can check out after this video. And then also a download link to Metric VBT, the free velocity-based training app that uses computer vision on your phone. So you don't actually need to buy hardware or device if you want to start training with velocity. Now below this, you'll see some toggles for both the individual logbook and the group logbook. I'll show you how to use these in a second, but for now, let's just leave them all ticked on. If you're gonna use the group logbook or the individual logbook, they're almost identical. So let's go to the individual logbook now and have a look at what's going on. Now, to start, it's really messy. There's a lot going on. That's where those checkboxes from before come in. We can turn things on and off based on what you want. So this has great flexibility, so you can simplify it and make it more focused based on how you wanna train with velocity in the gym. So first you'll see uh, we've got exercise details, the date and the exercise that you're using. The exercise is just a drop down picker. Then we've got the set details. So load, reps, best rep velocity, last rep velocity, which is the slowest usually rep in your set. Velocity loss, which is the percentage decrement from that best rep to the last rep. And then RPE, which if you're training with RPE, you can log that here as well. You can turn some of these columns off. So going back to the instructions sheet, if you don't work with RPE or velocity loss or last rep velocity, just uncheck them then go back to the individual logbook and you'll see they're now hidden. So now we've just got three columns here in the set details, load, reps, and best rep velocity. Makes it much more simple and much more focused if you don't use those numbers. Now let's move across to the auto regulation, the velocity auto regulation section. We've got three columns here, a seven day, a 30 day, and a 90 day contextual number. What that does, what each of those columns does is it looks for the name of the exercise and the load. So back squat, 40 kilos in this uh, row nine example here. And it goes, well, what's your 7, 30 or 90 day average for a back squat, high bar back squat with 40 kilos? It looks for that and then it shows you your difference. So how much above or below that average you are today. This number is really powerful when it comes to auto regulation and looking at your readiness. So how fatigued you are today uh, versus that average that we've used. Now, my personal favorite is the 30 day. So I tend to turn off the seven and the 90 day version and just focus on that 30 day average. Ideally, most workouts should be slightly faster than what you've done over the last month, but not always. If you're a little more fatigued, your numbers might be down and you might use that information to make adjustments. Maybe you do a little less volume, you drop a working set or you do a set to four instead of set to five. You might make some little adjustments based on that information. And it's got a color code. So the dashes means there is no data. There is no average to compare today's numbers to. But the green means you're above or on par. So you're within sort of negative 2.5 or above of your average. In this case, 30 day average. The red you can see here is a big drop. So that's a big decrement compared to your 30 day average. And then the yellow, which we've got down here, we've got one example of the yellow in our trap bar deadlift, that is slightly below your 30 day average, but not massively. So maybe yellow might just be a case of you applying low, atten low intent. And you can see in this example, the 90 kilos was a little bit below, but then on the next set, the 100 kilos back up to normal. So 
maybe we didn't make any changes based on that yellow set. Had this next set, this 100 kilo set, also been yellow or red, maybe the 110 kilo set would have been 105 instead. Or we might have just done a double instead of a triple. You can make these little tweaks as you go based on that real-time auto regulation. It's one of my favorite uses for velocity-based training in general, but particularly for this logbook. Now, if we move on from the auto regulation columns, we see profiling scores. This is one of the major new features in this version two logbook book that we've created. It allows you to estimate your 1RM look at a V0 score or look at a curve score all in real time during your training sessions. Now you'll notice that some of these columns and rows are blank. That's because there isn't enough data on that training day to give you a profile score. So if we look here at the 5th of the 3rd, so the 5th of March 2022, it requires three sets before a profiling score can be created. Any less than three sets and the data is just too random. You won't get a good score and a good profiling result. So it just leaves them blank. But then on this third set, we've got a profiling score. So we've got an estimate of 1RM, we've got a V0 score, and we've got a curve score. Now, again, if you don't use all of those, if you just care about 1RM, for example, you can turn off V0 and curve score, go back to your logbook, and you'll see that you've now just got that estimate of 1RM. So you've just got one number to focus on. Now, it uses uh, a linear profiling method to find your uh, the intersect between your load velocity profile using the data in the logbook along with the minimum velocity threshold from the exercise tab. So on this exercise tab is the list of all your exercises and you can put in a minimum velocity threshold for each exercise. I've just put in some rough estimates based on some science and, and sort of my own experience using these exercises, but you might find different variables. So you can punch in different numbers based on what you need. And then there's blue ones with a gold bold font. What that means, and you'll also see them over here in the set details. So there's blue cells going on over here, blue cells going on over here. What they are is they're indicating your all-time bests or equal bests. So in the example of the estimated 1RM, these blue ones are your best ever estimated 1RM for that exercise. So we set a record here. Obviously, first time you do it, that's going to be a record in the logbook. But then also next workout on the fifth, we also set another record. So another kilo on that estimated 1RM in this mock data example. And you'll also see these blue cells, like I mentioned, over here in the set details. What we're seeing here is a load PR or PB, depending on whether you like personal records or personal bests. So we have a load PR, reps PR, so that's reps, best rep number at that load. And then my favorite is the velocity PR. So these blue cells here are the fastest I've ever lifted a trap, a in this example, a trap by deadlift at 70 kilos, 0.98 meters per second. That's the fastest I've ever moved that weight on that exercise. Now, obviously, you'll see there's a lot of blue going on here in this example data, but that's because it's the first sets we've uh, we've recorded. So as you add more data, they won't happen every single workout like we're seeing here. So as you add more data, they start to thin out and they start to really represent when you're making uh, a good session or having a good uh, workout. This pink section, pink section, which shows personal bests, and that's just showing you what the value is. So if you've been training for a while, you're looking back through your data and you go, well, what is my personal best velocity on a 100 kilo trap by deadlift? You can see that then go, oh, 0.71 is my, is my velocity today. 0.72 is my all-time best velocity. I'm not that far off. I'm pretty close to my all-time best. So tracking in the right direction, that's okay. I might be close to hitting a new velocity PR on that exercise. So that's the individual logbook. Now the group logbook is almost identical, except you've now got the option to select the athlete name as well as the exercise name. So athletes from the athlete tab, as it makes sense, you can select up to, I think it's a hundred athletes all through these green cells here, enter their names in and they'll then show up on the group log logbook picker. You pick their name, exercise details, set details, and then the, the auto regulation data, the profiling scores and the personal bests will filter for that athlete as well as for that exercise and load. So in this example, we've got Jacob did some sets. There's a set here for Babe Ruth. Two more sets for Jacob and then some sets for Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan's blue cells here are all based on his personal bests and his his records that he's set in the gym. So it doesn't factor in any sets done by the other athletes. That's the difference between the group sheet and the individual sheet. So next we want to look at the individual progress. And again, the group progress is the same as the individual one. We want to look at this progress sheet. On this sheet, we've got two charts. So first we've got our velocity progress by load. So if you pick an exercise and pick a weight, that then fills in the dates and the instances that you've ever performed that exercise and load combination. And you can see all the data for that. 
the velocity losses, the RPEs, uh, last rep velocity, best rep velocities, and the number of reps you've done. And we've got three sets here for the trap bar deadlift on the 20th, the 24th, and the 28th, all at 90 kilos. Over time, as you record more data, you should see a trend upwards in velocity at each weight. But not always. Sometimes fatigue can lead to a decrement and a trend downwards. But this graph allows you to highlight that. The second graph, if we keep going across, shows us our profiling scores. So if we look at this sheet here, again, we've got the deadlift deadlift selected. We've got three workouts and we've got three scores. The E1RM, so estimated 1RM, V0 and curve score. There's a link in the description to learn more about what these profiling scores mean if you want to dig into that. This data gives you the context to start making training decisions and decide what it is you want to be doing and where you want to be heading with your programming or goals towards competition or just towards enhanced performance. With my trap bar deadlift, there's a trend down in both this one in terms of velocity at 90 kilos and also in my profiling score. So maybe there's some fatigue showing up in this and this program might be too high, too high volume or too low a volume for me. And I'm actually going backwards away from my goals of lifting heavier weights. So that's it. So that's the velocity logbook. Now, I mentioned earlier about a little bit of a shortcut that if you use metric, there is a way you can automatically push your data into the logbook without having to go in and manually transcribe the numbers. It's way more efficient, super effective, uh, and it'll also send you back a little notification from the logbook with your contextual data. So you don't even have to leave the metric app during your training to log the data and get the information that you need from the spreadsheet. And you can then save looking at the spreadsheet for, well, never, if you don't want to, just have the data automatically go across or only when you really want to glance back and look at those profile charts. You'll need to check out the other video linked at the end. That video explains how to set up the shortcut, how to access that uh, little code snippet that's within the Google Sheet. Now, if you're coming across to this Velocity logbook from one of the old copies, you'll want to copy your new, your old data into this new sheet so that it becomes effective for you. When you do that, take your time, do it one column at a time. So do the dates first, then do the exercises, then load, then reps, then best re- velocity. Leave the calculations alone. Don't paste on top of those. Let the calculation do that automatically for you. But just do it column by column slowly so that you don't break any of the formulas as you go. Um, it is There is a bit going on beyond sort of those, uh, those co- I think it's column L and beyond. There's a bit of formula and a bit of equation work going on in there. So you don't want to mess with that too much. Let those things calculate automatically based on your set details and exercise details. So you can train really efficiently and get more out of your velocity. Happy lifting. And as I mentioned, if you have any comments or questions, hit me up Instagram, Twitter, or in the comments below on this video, uh, I'm happy to help. 